Welcome everyone to the ActivityNet Dense Captioning Events in Videos Challenge. This is our third installment of the challenge. My name is Ranjay Krishna. I am a PhD student at Stanford University, and my main aim in the next few minutes is to introduce you to the task of dense captioning events and announce the winners of our challenge. So traditional methods for video understanding have uh, traditionally focused primarily on assigning entire videos with one category lab label. Video datasets were designed such that each video only contains one self-contained action or activity label. In order to understand more complex activities, in the last few years, we've begun seeing models that can describe videos with captions, which describe the events happening in more detail. Uh, once, for example, one such caption can be uh, a man playing a piano in front of a crowd. However, a single caption can be too reductive. There are many other events occurring in the video. For example, we know that there is a person that starts to sing along at a certain point in the video. And then later on, the crowd reacts as another person begins to dance to the music. In order to capture and reason about the complex and often co-occurring events in a video, we introduced the task of dense captioning events and videos in 2017. Given a video, the task involved two steps, localizing events in time and describing them in language. Our task was motivated by findings in neuroscience, which found that people tend to segment videos into consistent groups or segments, implying that there is a commonly accepted beginning and end to events. And if people can detect these boundaries, we should also be able to train models to do so as well. Tr to train models to accomplish this task, we introduced the ActivityNet captions dataset, consisting of 20,000 videos with over 100,000 sentences. Each of the sentences were temporally localized with an average of 3.6 sentences per video and 13 words per sentence. We designed our annotation tasks to encourage consistent segmentations and found that our events encompassed about 94% of the videos. At the time of our release, our data set was the only video data set with temporally localized overlapping events. We were also an order of magnitude larger than other captioning events with uh, captioning data sets with multiple events. We noticed that our video event descriptions were quite different from the descriptions used to describe image scenes, like those from the visual genome data set. Uh, in comparison to their data set and their image-based descriptions, our video descriptions contain more verbs, more adverbs, uh, more core references, while the image descriptions primarily focus on objects and their attributes. We also found that our descriptions contained uh, the activity net label uh, of the action occurring in the videos in about 70% of uh, our descriptions. Only for very uncommon activities uh, like power uh, blocking, did we not have any descriptions explicitly mentioning the activity. Once the data set was built, we identified two key challenges in developing models that could learn to localize and describe events in videos. First, we needed mechanisms that could detect both short as well as long events. Some events, like a person throwing a ball, can occur in a matter of seconds, while others, like a baseball game, uh, can last for minutes. Existing work uh, had focused primarily on detecting these shorter events, and these methods tended to fail to capture these longer ranging events in our data set. The second challenge was incorporating context when describing any single event. Each event occurs before, concurrently, or after other events, and that information can be utilized to improve our descriptions and introduce uh, co-references to previous events and even set up what might happen next. Uh, with these in mind, we developed a model that tackled both of these challenges. Uh, the model starts out by first extracting 3D um, con features from each of the frames. Next, it uses these features to find events. We developed a hierarchical proposal model that captures events both that are shorter as well as longer timescales. This tackles our first challenge of varying length events. 
we used an LSTM at different strides as hierarchies. The smaller strides found smaller events, while the longer strides found the longer events. Once the events were localized, we extract their features and feed them into our captioning model. The captioning module uh, tackles our second challenge of incorporating context when describing any event. We fuse the features of past and future events and allow our model to attend over, um, uh, over both these fused features to describe events while also remembering the context of other events. We find that this contextualization helps it produce more realistic descriptions that correctly uh, refer to other events. And that's our complete model. So let's take a look at some example outputs. Here's an example which contains a series of shorter events followed by a much longer event that starts somewhere in the middle of the video. Uh, first, a man is speaking to the camera. Uh, then the dog performs some tricks. And, uh, and then finally, um, it's the, the dog runs around in circles around the field for a while. And here is another event in our uh, uh, another data set uh, output um, from our model. So these are captions generated for a specific type of video that commonly occurs in our data set, uh, which is the instructional video. In instructional videos, events occur in sequence one after another. And our model is able to capture such events and describe each step even sometimes referring back to previous items that were used in a previous step, and sometimes even setting up what might happen in uh, the future. So it sets up, for example, that we're going to eventually mix things in a bowl, and then later goes on to describe uh, that event when it does happen, when we are mixing things in a bowl. Since 2017, a number of follow-up works have built upon both our models as well as our data set. And let me mention a few highlights. Uh, the ActivityNet and Entities data set expands upon our ActivityNet captions data set and adds grounding for objects in the video that are references uh, to a reference in the descriptions. This allows for joint object as well as event localization. The something something data set uh, cleanses our data set uh, by removing object category labels and cultural labels, allowing models to generate templates of events as opposed to having to also remember which objects uh, were participating in the events and um, also remember cultural events. The ActivityNet QA data set automatically generates question answers uh, from our captions and learns to train video question answering models. So aside from just using the data set itself, um, a bunch of papers have also built upon and improved our initial model for dense, dense captioning. Um, and let me mention a couple of those that are kind of interesting. Uh, in the last three years, these models have incorporated the latest developments in both natural language processing as well as computer vision to improve both model architectures and training um, uh, algorithms. These improvements range from incorporating transformer decoders or even BERT-based models. Uh, they represent uh, context as more than just past and future and develop hierarchical decompositions of events. Other work have focused on simultaneously grounding the objects in the events as a proxy task, uh, thereby improving on the original task of captioning. And some other models have built dual language and vision fusion modules that properly combine the features from both modalities. And finally, reinforcement learning models have been developed that are using meteor scores as rewards uh, to improve uh, performance on our uh, data sets. So with that, let's change gears and take a look at this year's challenge. Uh, we had 44 entries. Um, from 15 different teams from around the world participating in the task of dense captioning events in videos. And we evaluated the models that were uh, submitted 
to the workshop challenge by using the average meteor score between the model descriptions against uh, the descriptions in our held, at, held out test set. Uh, we only included generated descriptions as positive examples if they had a certain temporal intersection over union with our ground truth descriptions. Across all of our submissions, we saw some common themes. Um, uh, all top teams used uh, multimodal features ranging from RGB motion uh, to spatiotemporal features. Uh, the utilization of newer architectures and modules was also very common. There are multiple ResNext as well as BERT based models. There were also uh, newer bi directional single stream temporal action mod localization modules that were used. And a lot of the top teams also utilize pointer networks when generating captions. Uh, reinforcement learning, uh, just like last year, was also very common uh, in the models that were proposed this year. And re-ranking of uh, the generated captions to pick the most likely one was another commonly used technique across many different uh, submissions. In the future, I expect uh, and hope to see more models that utilize uh, subword uh, tokenization to improve captioning with rarer words. I also hope that we as a community develop better uh, evaluation metrics. We have known for many years now that Meteor, CIDR, and these other Ngram-based evaluation metrics do not correlate well with human judgment. I also hope to see more work in understanding the compositionality of events we have recently actually done some work uh, in a project called Action Genome where we decompose actions as spatiotemporal scene graphs to better understand how relationships between objects change as actions occur. I also expect to see more proxy language and vision tasks. We've already begun seeing benchmarks that incorporate multiple vision and language tasks um, uh, using models like Vilbert and Vielbert. And I expect more of these to keep coming because they seem to be very promising. Uh, finally, I hope to see more work that augments perceptual understanding of events with common sense expectations and knowledge about how events should occur and what they imply. Back when we released the model, our model performed at about uh, a 4.82 average meteor score. And uh, this year, the third place team from uh, called ByteDance already doubles uh, that score to 8.59. Our second place goes to a team from SYSU with a score of 9.28. And our winners are from uh, Renmin University with a score of 9.89. Next, I will ask the winners of the challenge to speak to us about their model and how they went about designing the winning algorithm. After that, we'll be joined by the second place team who will also tell us about their model. Thank you everyone for joining us here at CVPR 2020 and I hope you enjoy this challenge. Hi everyone. My name is Yu Qing Song. I will present our work exploring sequential events detection for dense video captioning. This is joint work with Shi Zhe Chen. Ida Zhao and Qin Jin. We are from Renmin University of China. This is the outline of the presentation. I will first introduce the task and then describe the two main modules of our system, including the event sequence generation module and event caption generation module. In the end, I will make a summary of our work. As shown in the figure, the dense video captioning task aims to describe an untrimmed video with multiple sentences. It needs to detect meaningful events in the long video and generates descriptions for each event. Therefore, the event detection is vital to the informative caption generation. The typical events detection method usually follows a two-stage manner, which includes a candidate proposal generation stage and a proposal selection stage. In the first stage, 
A large amount of event candidates are proposed by sliding window on neural networks, such as the SS team. Then, the event classifiers are designed to predict event confidence for each candidate. The proposals with confidences higher than a fixed threshold will be selected as the final event proposals. Such two-stage miner has two drawbacks. First, it needs to generate enough candidates to ensure covering all the possible events and the amount is usually about 1,000. Hence, it is not efficient and computationally expensive. The second problem is that the temporal relationships between the events are not considered in such methods. As a result, it may lead to select events with high redundancy. Actually, we find the descriptive events in a video are highly temporal related they usually follow some temporal orders as shown in the figure. There are mainly three types of temporal orders in the activity night data set. The first is the sequential order, where the events are one after another, maybe with some small overlap. Based on our statistics, there are about 81% of videos contain sequential events. The second type is summary details order, which first summarizes the general event, such as a woman is making juice with a fruit, and then describes some detailed events, such as show the fruit, put the fruit to the juicer, and drink the juice. Such type covers 16% of reviews in the data set. The third type is reversed, which is details first and end with a summary. This type accounts for a very small proportion. Overall, we can see there are about 98% of videos have explicit temporal orders. Therefore, we can exploit the temporal relationships between the events to generate the event proposals. The event's detection can be solved as a sequence generation task with one pass generation. Based on above analysis, we propose a novel and simple event sequence generation model by fully exploiting the temporal dependence between the events. This is the overview of our proposed ESG model. Let's see the left part first. We first encode the video and model the context information. We divide the video into several segments and extract the segment-level video feature from three modalities. Based on the segment-level feature, we further capture the context, of context information with a bidirectional GRU. The hidden states of two directions are then concatenated and added to the segment-level feature. With these context-aware features, we can generate the event sequence step-by-step. Step. We first represent each event with a t-dimensional binary vector EI. Each value of the vector xi denotes if the corresponding segment included in the event. We introduce two spatial events, the spatial start event and spatial end event, and denote them with all the rows vector. We use a GRU as the event decoder and initialize it with global video feature. At each decoding step, we feed the previous event to the decoder and predict the current event distributions over the whole video timeline. The period where predict probabilities over 0.5 forms the generated event. In such a way, we can generate the event one by one until the special end event is generated. However, in such forward parts, we only generate the event sequence depending on previous events information. 
the future events are also helpful for the current event prediction. Therefore, we train another event generator with the whole video reversed and generate the event sequence with future event contexts. Finally, we match the corresponding events in two directions and average their distribution maps to get the final event boundaries. We use binary cross entropy for the model training. For faster learning, we utilize the teacher forcing training strategy by feeding the ground truth event at each decoding step. We compare our proposed event detection model with other two-stage methods in CVPR 2019. Our full model with bidirectional temporal dependencies outperforms the baseline in both average recall and precision. The improvement is especially obvious on the high TLU. We can also see Combining the predicted distribution from two directions outperforms the single direction, which shows both the past and future events are helpful for current event detection. We also calculate the basic characteristics of the generated proposals. There are about 2.89 pr proposals generated for each event, for each video. And the average length is also close to the ground truth, with about 41 seconds. More importantly, the self-TLU of generated proposals is only 0.07, which demonstrates the proposed model can generate events with much less redundancy. This is a visualization example. We can see the proposed event sequence generation model can generate more diverse and accurate events without redundancy, while the two-stage method will select similar high-confidence proposals without considering the temporal relationships between the events. While above is about the event detection, with the generated event proposals, we next generate descriptions for each event. Following our previous work, we adopt an intra-event caption model with local context, global context, and event location information. For the decoder, we use a two-layer stacked GRU. More details can be found in our report in this year and the last year. Since the precision of events is vital to the final performance, we combine the proposals with our previous work and re-ranking them with the same strategy in the last year. For the caption, we train a video semantic matching model to re-rank the generated captions and select the best caption for each event. We train the captioning model with cross-entropy loss and fine-tune it with the self-critical reinforcement learning algorithms. Training with meter reward makes a huge improvement on the meter metric for both ground truth proposals and the generated proposals. And the caption re-ranking is also beneficial to achieve better performance. In the final summation, we enlarge the training site with 80% of wave validation site, and finally achieves 9.89 meters on the testing site. In summary, we fully exploit temporal dependence of events and propose a novel and simple event sequence generation model without traditional two-stage process. Our proposed system achieved the state-of-the-art performance on the Dance Video Captioning Challenge 2020. In the future, we will further explore the coherence of multiple sentences for the event sequence. That's all. Thank you. 
If you have any questions, please feel free to contact with us. Hello, everyone. Uh, this title of presentation is Dense Video Captioning with Time for Modeling and Enhanced Multimodal Fusion. My name is Tong Wang from Science University. In the past few years, dense video captioning has joined more and more attention, and we have seen lots of progress in the task. Dense video captioning aims to describe an untrimmed video by several sentences with their locations. This slide shows a basic pipeline of dense video captioning task. First, we input the video into a feature extractor to get the frame level features. Then, an event proposal generation network is used to predict a set of event proposals. Afterwards, a selection network is performed to select a small subset of proposals, which only keeps the most salient proposals and uh, remove other redundant proposals. Finally, we input multiple proposals into event caption model to generate multiple captions as the final output. The popular techniques used in recent methods are listed as below. The first direction is to ex extract rich video representation including 3D CN, optical flow features, speech features, and so on. The second point is to detect high-quality proposals. A good proposal generation network usually keeps a balance of recall and precision, and has a reasonable number of proposals. The third direction is contest modeling in the captioning model. Some previous work use visual contest like, like neighbor regions, uh, event level semantic attention, and uh, frame level RN, and so on. Some methods also use linguistic contest between sentences by a hierarchical RN. <coughs> another, four, another fourth point is uh, some tricks. Uh, like ensemble and the data augmentation to boost the final performance. As for our model, we mainly explore two new modules for, for contest modeling. Our work is motivated by two observations from data. We found the ground truth captions of a video usually contain lots of chron chronological words, such as afterwards, then, continue, and so on. As we counted in the ActiveNet caption dataset, over half of videos contain chronological words or phrase. Uh, it shows temporal relationship modeling between events is necessary. Secondly, we argue that a balance of visual and linguistic information may be helpful. From the data set, we found some sentences are not related to the previous sentences. For example, many videos end up with a logo across a black screen. This event is independent of previous generated sentences. It uh, only relay on the visual features. So when generating a sentence, we propose to adaptive, adaptive determine which modality is more reliable. Now the overall architecture of our method is shown. For the feature ext extraction, we use TSN to get the frame level feature vector. Then, we adopt DBG model and the modified ESG model to get the event proposals. Uh, you can find the de details in these two papers. Next, we will describe in details about the event captioning model. 
The first step is to encode visual features by TSRM, Temporal Semantic Relation Module. This module considers both temporal relation and semantic relation. The temporal relation score between two proper rules is calculated based on the relative temporal position. And uh, the semantic relation score is calculated based on the feature similarity of two proposals. Once getting the two types of relation scores, we fill them by addition. The output feature of target event is obtained by the weighted summation of all input e events. In this way, we can obtain the relational feature for each event. Next step is to decode the visual representation into test modality. Uh, we use a hierarchical decoder, which is composed of sentence RN, a word RN, and a CMG, cross-model cross gating block. Sentence RN aims to store the previous sentences and provide an initial hidden state for word RN. Word RN aims to generate a word sequence. And uh, the CMG aims to fuse the event feature and the linguist feature by a gate. Then, we input the output feature of CMG into the, into the sentence RN. In this way, we can enhance the multimodal fusion and improve the performance of decoder. We conduct e experiments on ActiveNet captions dataset. We use two types of dataset splits. For modified split, we enlarge the training site with the videos in validation site. We first train the captioning model by cross-entropy training. And then we use self-critical sequence training to boost the performance. This slide shows the evaluation results of the generated uh, proposals. Our model achieved 66% precision and 40% uh, uh, recall. Uh, this slide shows evaluation results of the, this video captioning. Uh, the first table shows the effectiveness of each component. We can see that both TSRM and CMG can achieve a significant performance improvement. The table on the left below uh, shows, uh, shows the improvement of SCST and the enlarged training set. Overall, our final summation achieves a 9.17 meter score on the test set. Thanks for your listening, uh, that's all.